Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to have a look at some of the best builds in preparation for the brand new 7-star Hisuian Typhlosion Terror Raid event that's just been announced in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Starting later this week on the 3rd of November and running over that weekend to the 5th of November, we're going to see the first phase of Hisuian Typhlosion come to Scarlet and Violet. The second phase will repeat the following weekend from the 10th to the 12th, we're going to get two phases of this Hisuian Typhlosion in our games. So with about four days preparation for this event before it goes live in Scarlet and Violet, we're going to kick off the video today by taking an overview of Hisuian Typhlosion, look at its options and what we can expect from this raid boss when it goes live later this week. So Hisuian Typhlosion is a ghost and fire type Pokemon. It is going to have the fire terror type tied to it. So we'll have increased damage on all of its fire type attacks. As always with the other seven star terror raids, it will be less level 100 it will have its hidden ability frisk and of course it will have that 30 times multiplier to its hp stat so it's sitting around 8610 not as large as some of the previous seven star raids that we've had recently the suit in time Flosion does have a base speed of 95 so again a little bit faster than some of the previous seven star terror raids but again not too fast and we've got a bunch of options that are going to allow us to go in and deal with it pretty efficiently the expected moves we can see on Hisuian Typhlosion are things like Eruption. That is a big fire type attack that's going to be boosted by that fire terror typing, of course. And its damage is based on its overall HP. When it's at max HP, it's going to be hitting for around 150 base damage. So it is a very strong attack. And also, if we see it boosted by the sun as well, it's definitely something that we need to take into consideration going into this raid. Infernal Parade is its signature ghost type attack, and it does have a 30% chance to burn, and it will also double its damage if the target Pokemon is affected by a status move. So if it uses Infernal Parade on you, and it does burn you the next turn that it does hit, it will be hitting for double damage, a big powerful ghost type attack. So again, something to be aware of when going into these raid bosses. Shadow Ball is something to consider. Always, it's just a consistent ghost type attack that it can utilize. Solar Beam is something, if we do see Sunny Day, it does give it nice coverage against water type attacks. And definitely something just to keep in mind, depending on what you're thinking of bringing into this raid. Focus Blast is fighting type coverage. Of course, if you are considering bringing maybe some of the dark type coverage in against this ghost type pokemon or even some normal types that we'll be looking at today it is something to just keep in the back of our mind that this could be an option that we do see for that coverage on the hisuian typhlosion it might cause a few headaches if we do see it but it's not massively likely in my opinion just something that we have outlined as a possibility overheat is another big powerful fire type attack that it can take advantage of of course does lower the special attack on Hisuian Typhlosion every time it uses it, but it is an option nonetheless. And then we've got Inferno and Burning Jealousy, which are just additional fire type options that Hisuian Typhlosion does have access to. Now, Inferno is 50% accurate, but it does have a 100% burn rate. It means that you can get that burn status on the target Pokemon and then start using that Infernal Parade, which will be double damage every time you use it. So getting status on Pokemon Probably going to be one of the big things that Hisuian Typhlosion is going to try and do throughout this raid. Burning Jealousy is another option that it does have access to. It is a TM, so might not be as likely as something like Inferno, but it is a possibility. And if you do boost your stats on a turn and it uses Burning Jealousy after that, it will inflict a burn onto the target Pokemon. So again, giving you that status that you don't really want when facing the Infernal Parade. It's just something to consider now it's setup options it doesn't have many setup or supporting options but the ones that i would highlight that we're likely to see i think going into this raid especially when there's such a reliance on that kind of signature infernal parade move it's definitely something like will-o-wisp it is going to have a lot of accuracy of course it's not going to hit 100 percent of the time but it will inflict that burn status onto the target pokemon and then doubling the damage of that infernal parade after that if it does have access to it of course Calm Mind is something that we could potentially see, boosting that special defense and the special attack on the Hisuian Typhlosion, something that regular Typhlosion doesn't actually have access to. So definitely something to keep in mind going into this raid. And of course, Sunny Day is something that we're probably likely going to see. It is going to boost the power of all those fire type attacks even further on top of that Terra Fire Terrestrialization, its base fire typing. 
and then those big fire type attacks like eruption and overheat that it does have access to. So I would say these are some of the more common options that we're likely to see on Hisui and Typhlosion when the event does go live later this week. Of course, this is all just best guess until the event goes live on the 3rd of November. But looking through all of its options, these look like the moves that we could potentially see that we would probably give it the best chances of being as disruptive and as powerful as possible throughout the raid. So something to keep in mind, especially if you're wanting to put your own builds together going forward for this event going live later this week. So with the overview of Hisui and Typhlosion out of the way, there's some of the options that we might see when the event goes live. I have put together a few builds, of course, going into this video today for you to maybe look at, take some inspiration from, and have a look at putting together maybe in your own game. Pre-rec, as always, before we go into this part of the video, just remember that the raid hasn't gone live yet. We don't know the interactions of the Hisui and Typhlosion. It can play a big part in how some Pokemon can perform in the raid when you go in against it, like when the Hisui and Typhlosion sets up its shield, when it nullifies the stat boost on your side of the field, when it nullifies the stat boost on its side of the field, and how many times it does that throughout the raid, as well as those move options that it does have. So it might be best to not put anything together pre the event going live on Friday. And of course, as always, we will be covering the best solo builds after doing some initial testing when the raid event goes live on that 3rd of November. So if you don't want to put anything together in game just yet, probably best holding off. But if you do want to put some things together, these are probably some of the better options that you can put together going into this event to prepare for it when it does go live. And as always, all of the builds that we do feature in today's video will be down in the description below. So if you want to take a closer look at them after the video, be my guest, they'll all be down in the description. But we're going to kick off with one of my favorites for this raid and it is going to be Snorlax. There's a few reasons why I think Snorlax is going to be very good going into the Hisui and Typhlosion. It's going to be a normal type by nature. It is going to have the ground terror typing on this particular build. And we are going to have the Shell Bell as its held item. Of course, make sure that you are hyper training all of your Pokemon. So all their relevant IVs are set to 31. We have level 100, of course, and a move set of Belly Drum, Screech, Amnesia and Earthquake with an EV spread of 252 in attack, 252 special defense and 4 in HP with an adamant nature. Just because of Snorlax's natural high HP stat, we don't really need to invest in that any more than what it is already. So it's better off investing in what we expect the Typhlosion to kind of be throwing out, which is primarily going to be special attack and moves. So investing in that special defense and then bolstering our attack and options as well with that adamant nature and 252 in attack. The big important thing here is that thick fat ability, which reduces the attack power of fire and ice type attacks by 50% every time it's hit by those. So it means that the Hisuian Typhlosion, when it does launch off those big eruptions, that attack power is going to be reduced by half, so not doing as much damage to the Snorlax, which is going to be pivotal in this matchup. And of course, with its normal typing that it does normally have anyway, it's going to have an immunity to those ghost type attacks, especially that Inferno Parade, which does have that added bonus of having the burn effect on it. You're going to be immune to that, so you're not really going to be affected by it. You can be affected by things like Will-O-Wisp, of course, Inferno if it does have it, and of course, Burning Jealousy if it is an option. So there's something to keep in mind as well. If you want to go for an alternate Snorlax set, it is going to be a slight bit slower because you're not going to be hitting it for super effective damage with the ground type attack that we've got on here. But you could go with Facade and a normal Terra typing as well. That will be in the description if you want to take a look at that one. But at least go on the facade, you get around the burn status if that is something that is going to be a little bit awkward to play around. But of course, as well, you do have your heal chairs as well that can get rid of that burn if it is something that you come across against the Hisuian Typhlosion with this particular set. But the basic premise of this is going to be pretty much going turn one for an amnesia. It's going to give you a plus two in special defense, so meaning you're going to be able to take those big special attacks even better going forward in the match, which should give you room to get a belly drum off. You can then go for the belly drum, then you can go for your screeches as well. That's going to reduce the defense on the Hisuian Typhlosion by two stages every time you use it. So ideally, you want to get the Hisuian Typhlosion down to minus six defense. You want to get your belly drum off, give you plus six attack, and then launch off those earthquakes until you can terrestrialize. Get a further boost with that terrestrialization on that ground terror typing and do some big damage to the Hisuian Typhlosion with the Snorlax or you're not really going to be able to take too much damage because of that thick fat and that amnesia supporting you there. The Shell Bell as well, once you do launch an Earthquake off, is going to help recover that health that you have lost in the setup. 
So all in all, a really nice, well-rounded Pokemon, I think, for going in against Hisuian Typhlosion. Like I say, I think the only big things that you're going to have to watch out for are things like Will-O-Wisp or maybe Inferno or something else that can burn you, that can slow you down. But you've always got the option to go for that facade option and the normal terror typing on the Snorlax, which is going to keep that ghost type immunity throughout the battle. But the thick fat is the big option on the Snorlax that I would say keep that intact because that is going to be really pivotal and allowing the Snorlax to kind of function in this raid. The next Pokemon we are going to feature is Manaphy. It is going to be a mythical Pokemon, so not something that everyone has access to. But if you do have access to Manaphy in your games, it is accessible in Pokemon Legends Arceus and then transferable across through home into Scarlet and Violet. But it is going to be a very good Pokemon and I have to give a big shout out to my good friend Light for kind of conceiving the idea behind this set and spread. So Manaphy level 100, Shell Bell is going to be the held item, Terra Typing is going to be water, make sure you've hyper trained it of course and the move set is going to be rain dance tail glow fake tears and surf ev spread is going to be 252 hp 252 special defense with the rest before put into special attack and a modest nature the ability is going to be hydration and the basic premise of this is turn one you're going to want to set your rain dance up now that's also going to benefit the hydration because if you are burned at all uh, from any attack that comes out from the hisuian typhlosion then at the end of the turn as long as it's raining that burn status will be cured. So you're not going to be susceptible to that double damage uh, Infernal Parade attack that the Hisuian Typhlosion can fire off. Then you've got access to Fake Tears. It's going to reduce the special defense on Hisuian Typhlosion every time you use it. So you want to use that three times, ideally. Get it down to minus six. And then use Tail Glow twice. Now, Tail Glow is a great move. Not many Pokemon get access to it, but every time you use it, it gives you a plus three to your special attacking stats. So it's a really strong attack. Very quick setup as well, and really no kind of drawbacks to it. You're not losing any HP or anything like that. You would normally see with a big status boosting move like this. And then you're going to utilize that Surf until you can Terrastalize. Boosted by the Rain, boosted by a Terrastalization. You're going to be able to cut through the Hisuian Typhlosion very, very easily with the Manaphy. So a really nice option, like I say. Um, but not. I understand not everyone has access to one. And if you don't have access to one, a nice backup option to that is going to be Vaporeon. I think a very nice option going into the Hisuian Typhlosion anyway. I think the only things that you're going to have to watch out for if you are running Manaphy or uh, the Vaporeon or the next one that we're going to feature, which is the Hisuian Samurott, is access to that Solar Beam attack. If the Hisuian Typhlosion has Solar Beam, you can slow it down with Rain Dance, but it is going to be an attack that can threaten you, so you have to watch out for that in particular if it does have access to it. But as an alternative to Mana Feet, Vaporeon is going to fit the bill perfectly here. We've got level 100, Shell Bell is the held item, Terra Typing is Water, and a moveset of Rain Dance, Calm Mind, Fake Tears, and Surf. EV spread of 252 Special Attack, 252 Special Defense, and the rest put in HP. Because of its naturally high HP stat anyway, it makes more sense to put the bulk of the EVs into its attack and its special defensive side. Because of the special attack and threats that the Hisuian Typhlosion does have access to, again, we've got the hydration ability on this. It is the hidden ability on the Vaporeon, so you're going to have to use an ability patch on the Vaporeon to get access to it. But again, if you do get burned, as long as the rain is up on the field, you'll be curing those status conditions at the end of every turn. Plays nicely into reducing the attack power of those fire type attacks as well as boosting your water type attacks as well. So it's a little bit of a slower setup than the mana fee, but you're going with Calm Mind, it's going to boost your special attack and special defense by one stage every time you use it. So ideally, you want to get six of those off. Whether you're going to have room to get six off or not, but getting to plus three, plus four with the Calm Minds is going to probably put you in a really good position. But fake tears it's going to reduce the special defense on that hisuian typhlosion by two stages every time you've used it and just keep the rain on the field active because it's going to boost your surf it's going to boost your water type attacks especially after you terrestrialize and you've got those calm mines up you're going to be doing big damage and also with that shell bell item you're going to be recovering hp while you're attacking which is the big thing with these pokemon just bear in mind that fake tears doesn't work through the shield um, a little bit like the Screech that we've got on the Snorlax as well and the Fake Tears on the Manaphy. If the shield goes up early, you're not going to be able to use those uh, defense dropping options that we've got on these three Pokemon. So again, like we said before coming into these builds, depending on how the Hisuian Typhlosion setup interacts within the raid, 
will maybe allow some of these Pokemon to perform better or worse than what we expect them to at this point in time. So that is the Vaporeon. The next one is going to be another one of my favorites, I think, going into this. Again, going to have to be a bit careful if that Solar Beam is an option, if Focus Blast is an option, because it is going to be a Water and Dark type Pokemon. It's going to be susceptible to both of those, but it is going to resist the Ghost and the Fire type attacks because of the Water and Dark typing. And it is going to be Hisuian Samurott. It is going to have the Water Terror typing again, level 100. Shell Bell is the held item on here for a line of recovery throughout the raid when you're attacking. And the moveset is going to be Rain Dance, Screech, Sword Stance, and Razor Shell with the ability Sharpness, which boosts the power of all slicing moves by 1.5 damage. And Razor Shell being one of those moves does fall under the Sharpness bracket, so getting the boost from that as well. We've got an EV spray of 252 HP, 252 special defense, and then the rest put in attack with an adamant nature. And the basic premise again is going to be to get that rain dance up turn one. But for the screeches, it's going to reduce the defense stat on the Hisuian Typhlosion by two stages every time you use it. So you're going to ideally use three of those. Then boost your attack up by two stages every time you use the sword stance. So use that three times and then launch off those razor shells, which is going to be boosted by the rain as well, and does have a small chance to reduce the defense stat on the toggle Pokemon every time you use it. So even if the shield's up and you haven't been able to get those screeches off, razor shells are a really nice option, but you've got the possibility of reducing that defense stat even through the shield to further boost your attacking damage throughout the raid. So the big things are just get your rain dance up, get yourself terrestrialized, get your sword stance up, and if you can fit those screeches in at the start of the raid, on the Samurott. And if you are wanting to go with this particular moveset, it is worth noting that Screech is an egg move. So you're going to have to find something in your boxes with Screech. I'm sure that's not going to be a difficult task. Uh, delete a move on the Samurott, make room for it, put a Mirror Herb item on it and set up a picnic with that Pokemon and Samurott in your party. Uh, and then the screech should be transferred over to it. It's an easy way without having to actually breed it down anyway. So that is the Samurott. Really nice option and something I could see doing well in this raid when it goes live later this week. Next option is going to be Hisuian Arcanine. Now you might be thinking we're going for Flash Fire ability Pokemon in this because Flash Fire is an ability that's going to be really useful against Hisuian Typhlosion with all those big fire type attacks that are coming out. But if you look through the list of the Flashfire Pokemon, I'd say Arcanine, Hisuian Arcanine in particular, is the only one that's really going to be relevant going into this raid. There is Colossal that can do a job, and it does have attacking options which can hit the Hisuian Typhlosion for good damage, although it doesn't have really a way to boost its attacks, which is the one thing I think a lot of them are missing, either that or a good option to hit for super effective damage, whereas Hisuian Arcanine feels like it really fits in perfectly in these roles. It's not going to be the most perfect Pokemon, on, but I think it can be something that could do a decent job. Fire and rock typing, it is going to be immune to any burns coming out. It will be susceptible to ghost type attacks, but just taking neutral damage from those. But it will have a four times resist to any fire type attacks, which gives Hisuian Arcanine a big kind of advantage going into this raid. Of course, we've got the metronome item, which increases the damage every time you consecutively use a move in a raid. So it kind of plays into the moveset. We'll get to that in a moment. Level 100 as always, and the rock terror typing on here as the choice. So we've got Morning Sun. It is an egg move. Remember that one. Uh, Leer, Howl, and Head Smash is the moveset. We've got an EV spread of 252 HP, 252 special defense. The rest put in attack, which is that four and then an adamant nature with the ability rockhead like i said we're not going with the flash fire here you've got that four times resist two fire type attacks anyway so you're not really going to have to worry about them too much got the morning sun as a line of recovery on here as well so if the sun is up if the hisuian typhlosion sets a sunny day up on the field you're going to get all your health back every time you use that so you might want to max pp that out depending on how you feel how the setup is how the hisuian typhlosion interacts of course but it is a nice line of recovery nonetheless. You've got Howl, which is going to boost your attack and all of your partnering Pokemon's attack stat by one stage every time you use it. You've got Leer as well. It is an option to lower the defense stat by one stage on the toggle Pokemon. Just bear in mind, a little bit like Screech, it's not going to work through the screen. So you're going to have to try and get that off early. And then you've got Head Smash, which is an absolutely ridiculous base 150 power attack. It is a bit shaky on the accuracy side because it can miss but you're not going to take any recall from it because of that rock head ability on there. So the basic premise is going to be trying to get those layers off as soon as possible onto the Hisuian Typhlosion, get your howls boosted up, and then just use that head smash 
over and over and over again to take advantage of the metronome. You could switch the metronome for a life orb, but by the time you're hitting your third head smash in a row, you're going to be doing more damage with the metronome item than you would be with the life orb. So it's a little bit more beneficial there. The only drawback is you've only got 8 PP. That's maxed out on the head smash. So you're going to really have to maybe assess how this works in the raid. If 8 head smash aren't enough, then this might not be the most useful build to go in with. Of course, it will be something that we test when we go live into the event on Thursday evening, Friday morning. So this is something that we will come back to and address later on in a later video. But again, I think a really nice option just because of those four time resists that it does have to those fire type attacks. And it does have a way to hit the Hisu inside Flosion for super effective damage with those rock type attacks. Maybe you could go with something like rock slide there instead of the head smash if the PP is an issue. But again, something that I think is a decent option going into this raid. And of course, it wouldn't be a raid video without mentioning Arceus. I think a good option going into this raid. A lot of you do have access to Arceus uh, in your games and have used it throughout for a lot of other seven star raids, six star raids, and just farming five star spotlight terror raids. But I do think a good option going in to the Hisu and Typhlosion raid in general just because of the move options it does get because of its base stats as well making it quite good compared to other options that we've looked at in today's video. So with the Arceus it is going to be level 100 going with that normal typing and its terror typing is actually going to be water. We're not going with one of the plates either in this particular build but we are using the shell bell as its held item so we've got a line of recovery there. Throughout the raid and the moveset is going to be rain dance, calm mind, acid spray and surf with an EV spread of 252 in HP, 252 in special defense with a modest nature and the rest of those evs which would be the four in the special attack again the build will be down in the description below the ability is multi-typing as well but we're not taking advantage really of that in this raid basic premise is going to be set up the rain dance turn one then go for two to three calm mines then go for your three acid sprays the acid spray is going to reduce the special defense on the history and typhlosion by two stages every time you use it and it will work through the shield and it will also tick down your terrestrialization counter as well. So after that third time you've used the acid spray, you should be able to terrestrialize into your water type and then take advantage of the surf, which is again going to be boosted by that rain dance as well and reducing the fire attacking power on the Hisuian Typhlosion. And one of the reasons why we went for the water terror typing is because early on in the raid, you can set that rain dance up so it's going to reduce the damage of those fire type attacks with the normal typing of Arceus you're going to be immune to any ghost type attacks as well even if you do get burned through something like will-o-wisp you're not really going to be worried about it because you're hitting on the special side of things so you know, the, the burn not really going to worry you too much and with the shell bell you should be able to do some big damage throughout the raid just to get that recovery that you want but i feel like a very solid option nonetheless going into this raid but these are the ones that i wanted to feature just some notable mentions as well. We've got things like Ursa Luna and Blood Moon Ursa Luna that could be good going into this raid. The things that I have looked at, but I haven't really put builds together because I haven't got 100% confidence that they would work as well as some of these options that we've covered today. Of course, like always, it does depend on the options that we see move-wise on that Sue and Typhlosion when the event goes live and then how it interacts in the raid. But that's a running line that we've said throughout this video just to make you aware. But there's some options I think will be good if you want to prepare them in your games of course or hopefully they might inspire some thoughts and builds of your own that you want to take in against this Sassoon Typhlosion later this week but I hope you found today's video useful friends if you have please drop a like do subscribe to the channel as I say we'll be going live shortly after the event goes live later this week with the best solo builds for you to go in and take this thing down very easily and form for those great high cost items that you're going to get from these raids when they do go live so thank you so much for tuning in if you've got your own ideas on what you're thinking might be very good going into this raid leave them down in the comment section below i'd love to read through them all and i will just say thank you for tuning in have a great rest of your day more importantly take care of yourselves and i'll see you all in another video very soon so until then friends take care of yourselves and bye bye